But here is one of the clips of Dr. Ben Carson on Planned Parenthood. It's a controversial group, but Democrats have seized on Republicans' concerns about Planned Parenthood as being a war on women, that you're out to get yeah. women. Well, you know, I, it may be I'm not objective when it comes to Planned Parenthood, but, you know, I know who Margaret Sanger is. And uh, I know that she believed in eugenics and that she was uh, not particularly enamored with black people. And, and one of the reasons that you find most of their uh, clinics in black neighborhoods is uh, so that you can find a way to control that population. And I, th I think people should go back and read about Margaret Sanger, who founded this place, a woman who Hillary Clinton, by the way, says that she admires. Look and see what uh, many people in Nazi Germany thought about her. Wow, and they couldn't kill all the black people. She said that was her goal in, in, in uh, letters. So instead they came in, broke up the family, paid women not to have men in the house, MTV funded gangster rap. And I've talked to former MTV top executives. They were in the meetings in the early 90s. They said, rock and roll's going out. We're going to go with violent gangster rap. That's the directive from the government. And part of that's been declassified. And I've had top rappers, I mean, you know, from public enemy, you name it, who have exposed this as well. I mean, this is the plan. Before that, rap was about empowerment, the community, hip-hop, and then it just got taken over. And now it's a disease spreading across the world, causing crime, you name it, in, in every population. Weaponized media. Joining us now is Reverend Clinard Childress. And he joins us, blackgenocide.org. And since 1974, he's been fighting against the extermination of everybody, but particularly the main focus, the apple of the eugenicist knife is black people. And uh, if, you, if they can't kill all the blacks, they'll just kill their culture. They've done a pretty good job. Now they're killing everybody else. So it's like Tony Brown has said on this show, what they do to the blacks, they do to everybody, folks. Uh, so joining us, Reverend, thank you for coming on. I know uh, you've got to feel a little bit of satisfaction that finally who Margaret Sanger really is is breaking out big time. Is that exciting to you, sir? Oh, this is absolutely awesome. Uh um, is going far beyond what I thought originally, but unquestionably, I, I want to give kudos to uh, Dr. Carson, and certainly his uh, platform right now is basically saving babies because people are beginning to connect the dots. I'd like to personally thank George Soros for funding Black Lives Matter because certainly it has connected the dots to the womb, and it's doing just as we thought it would. I know we both thought about it at the same time, and we're getting out in the public square. We were at the NAACP convention. It was just unbelievable. People, when you start the conversation, Black Life Matters, they're in agreement. He's plowing up the ground for me for us to come in and say, well, what about here in the womb? Do you know that 1,786 African-American children are killed each day? Do you recognize that 52% of all pregnancies African-American end in abortion? Isn't that genocide? Do you recognize that this group is targeting African-Americans? And if they didn't know it before, how sinister and insidious Planned Parenthood is now, thank God for the Center for Medical Progress. This is all coming together. It's like a crescendo of God helping the pro-life activists, giving them the tools that they need we can't take credit for it because it certainly is a, an act of God totally, but we have to ride the wave. And so, uh, sure, Black and as you know, it's not about taking credit, but we do need to get people's morale up because we're having victories every time good people take action. I told you about Mikhail Phelan here, separately from you, months after you were doing it, we didn't even know, even though you'd been a guest and part of our work. We didn't know you'd launched originally all Black Lives Matter. He had the idea. I thought we ought to get Reverend Childress on and see what he thinks. And you go, yeah, I launched it months ago. We looked it up. It was like simultaneously or just the spirit moving us, whatever it was happening. Oh, you, you got it. You hit the nail right on the head. It was the spirit. And that really encouraged me to, to no end that this was the thing to invest my time, resources, uh, our our ministry in and and really take it to a level that we can we've never been before. Let's spend more time. Let's be more time on the radio. Let's really begin to uh, totally you know sacrifice ourselves in this mantra that they have created for us and just add 
all Black Life Matters and expose the hypocrisy. And I have to tell you this story. You just give me one minute. Uh, we're out there at the uh, NAACP. I won't say the person's name, but a top ranking NAACP delegate from a city where where they are holding the position of vice president. They are a pastor. She came out and took pictures of every one of our signs. And, uh, and, and, and she's looking at it and she's comparing them. She says, this is wonderful. We have to get this to our city. And so my wife happened to be there. She walked her over to me and she says, I, we have to bring this program to our city. I'm the vice president of my chapter. Uh, and I said, what chapter? She said, the National Action Committee. I got to get Al Sharpton involved in this. <laughs> so I said, well, that would be a great thing, ma'am. Uh, hopefully you let me know if you're a success. I tell you, I kept a straight face. His Skype just froze but, uh, for a moment. I'm, I'm sorry, your, your, your Skype froze, uh, Reverend. You said you kept a straight face? Okay, I, I kept a straight face and, said, and, and uh, didn't let her know what she'd be in for. But I'm just totally letting you to know the ignorance of African Americans when it comes to the abortion politics. And it exposes how well these leaders like Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, the Congressional Black Caucus, the NAACP sure. had censored the message. Uh, really, here she is, a high-ranking officer in the National Action Committee in her town, and she doesn't know how <laughs> Al Sharpton really manipulates this subject. Well, here's the good news. is you're, uh, This is why this is so huge, folks. Th this is coffin nails to the globalist agenda. If yes. this ever comes out, it's a game changer. When mm -hmm. they're over there race baiting, using a few sad stories of cops in questionable positions, shooting somebody in the back, cops get indicted, whatever, they're totally distracting from the real issue. And if that ever comes out, if that narrative ever gets in the discussion, oh. it's over for the Democrats and the party of the Ku Klux Klan. Well, that's the most exciting thing about it. Once again, you hit the nail around the head. And I'm getting trying to get pro-lifers to recognize this is the nail in the coffin. This changes the narrative in the minds of millions. This is an eye opener where people objectively really then now have to step back and say, what is going on here? What is this institution about? And why have we been censored from this message? Exactly. From our exactly. Instead of just saying they're babies, they could live outside the womb, they're humans, be sweet. That's part of the debate, maybe a third of it. But mm -hmm. they never want us to strike at the root where it came from, what yes. it's about, how sinister it is. I yes. found you put the truth out. That defeats it, and that's why when we go out and demonstrate for all Black Lives Matter, literal demons, I mean, I'm sure you've seen the video, show yeah. up, black demons, white demons, you name it. They are literal demons, and they start professing they love killing babies, they love the devil. At the state house, have you seen the video where they start saying, hell, Satan? I mean, these are yes. sick people, and by us, you and others, going out and confronting them, it makes them come out from under rocks and show people what we're really dealing with, and now the entire tack, as you said months ago on the show, and you said God had really shown you this could happen. And I think we're seeing providence here, and I can feel how big it is. That, that we could change the tack from the arguments that are slow and aren't really winning overall. We're slowly gaining ground, but we need decisive victories. And by changing the whole debate from, you know, the old kind of stale pro-life thing to really striking at the heart of it, we could see the collapse. We could see them defunded. We could really see them defeated. And that would be the greatest blessing for America in the last 200 years. So uh, we're right now at that front line. I ask your listeners to be supportive, uh, to carry the narrative on their Facebooks, on their conversations. Uh, it's getting to the black community such as never has been before since I've been involved. And I'm just, just so deeply excited about the fact that politicians now are going to have to give an answer. First, Cecil Richards now has to explain about the blob she told those young girls that she had in that blob was arms, legs, livers, brains that she was selling for more profit. Uh, now politicians uh, have to explain their vote to fund Planned Parenthood. Every Democrat, and if there's any Republican, they should have be held accountable. I mean, right now, why did you cast that vote to fund this heinous 
uh, oper- this heinous institution and that is purely racist and that is targeting African Americans. And we need to really now, we have a tool, a means really to shake the system. I mean, literally shake it. So uh, I say to all those who are listening, don't be afraid to carry this message. They started it. So <laughs> let us come in now and really take this to the level where it needs to be and connect the dots back to the womb. The Democrats are in big trouble right now. If we lay back, if we do not go forward, if we don't charge, this is a time to charge, storm the gates. Don't let the conversation go to the back burner again. Um, Mr. Politician, do you support Planned Parenthood? Will you continue legislation that will be supportive of Planned Parenthood? That's right. Who could have ever imagined Planned Parenthood would now be one of the main issues in 2016 while we have all these bombshell videos, while will be. Uh, they're being exposed, while you and others have hijacked the uh, Black Lives Matter fraud? I mean, it's just beautiful. We're attacking from every angle. We're storming the gates, my friend. Yes, and, and literally, we must storm those gates. <laughs> I want to have you back on the nightly news for a long interview here in the next few days. And, and, and let's, we should probably get you up every week for the next few months to really focus in on this. Thank you, Reverend Childress, blackgenocide.org. We salute your work. And yet again, hard work is paying off.